Oh, we're live? <laughs> I got, I got a, like 60 seconds though, so. Okay, rad. Let the man share it. Here we go. Yeah, it's up. It's up right now. You can grab it and uh, share it. Just on my yeah, it's just right off my uh, my Facebook page. <laughs> Struggle. Ten. Oh my gosh, people! What <laughs> is up? I am. Uh, it's so it's so good to see you today. This great. Great summer vibes, and uh, we're hanging out and listen. I'm so excited to get to hang out with one of my very best friends in the world. This Woo! guy means so much to me, um, spiritually as um, as a person, just all over the board. I know that if uh, you spent any time with him, you love him too. And so we're just going to talk about whatever the Holy Spirit wants us to. I want everyone to say hello to my good friend, Philip. King. What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you call me Philip. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, so good to see you. Oh, yeah, bro. So, how's the rainforest, man? You, you, <laughs> you enjoying yourself? <laughs> you, look, you look like you're in a, like a John Mayer music video, bro. <laughs> Dude, I had to. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? I, we're just uh, oh, look at these disappearing hands. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man! How you doing, man? I'm doing good, bro. It's uh, it's humid out here. You know, um, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Just enjoying life. Enjoying being in Texas. Enjoying being engaged enjoying um just getting to know the lord better and all over again in a lot of ways falling in love with jesus um and uh doing a lot over zoom these days but overall man just having a good time so cool so where so you're in texas what part of texas are you in right this second i'm in keller texas so kind of by the airport in dfw in dallas fort worth um in between the two the two hubs, so to speak, right in between Fort Worth and Dallas, and um, weather's nice. Yes. Not too many crazy storms. It's a, it's a, it's it's actually pretty cool today. It's been hot, like in the low nineties, but oh man, yeah, yeah, it's Those... it's been been heating up. What's the uh, what's the um, the the COVID? the uh the virus life what's what's the virus life in texas man is it is it Bro, shut down texas, or texas is over it are people like taking their guns out and be like corona i've been taking these guns out <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh dude um well uh, it's it's there's still some caution in the air but overall um Kind of where it's more crowded. It's still a little strict, but it's starting to loosen up. And um, I'm actually leading worship at a church this weekend where there's actually going to be a church full of people, but sitting in pods, like in little groups. Like you, you sit with your family, and then another family can sit over here, and another family can sit over here, and, and we can have church. It's kind of uh, crazy. Man, so real uh, people? Yeah, real people. Yeah. <sighs> Bro. It's, it, it's been a trip doing these things online, though, where, but it's amazing the way the presence of God, you still, you can still do it. You can still um, minister through a, a camera. It's, it's wild. It's new, but it's fun. And it's, it's, it's been a learning curve for sure. Like I, I got this background up. <laughs> it's just I, I learned how to do this. This is what the, uh, <laughs> I've become very tech savvy. <laughs> 
It's uh, super I mean, weird to think about doing church with no people. Like, yeah. I mean, I know that like we we sometimes think about like our our walk with God is 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 a very personal thing, you know. And we even preach it. You get your your own personal relationship with Jesus, and you know, and it it, it they, they're good sermons. You know what I mean? I don't. It doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. Like it's just me and the Lord. But then something like this happens, and you're like, it's actually not just me and God at all. Like that is absolutely not how this works. Like. <laughs> Like, yeah. being around community is a huge part of, like, being a yeah. Christian, you know? It is. My grandpa and I were talking about it, and, you know, he his, he pastored there in New York City twice in his lifetime, and he's an awesome guy, and he, he was telling me the way he thinks of it is, like, you have a jumbo jetliner, this big, roaring machine that flies at a high altitude, and it's loaded with people and energy, and it just you just, you just, whoa, you just go where you, <laughs> I'm, I'm slipping into other dimensions. <laughs> you just, you just go where you, you're supposed to go quickly on this jetliner. And he said, what, what we are having to learn how to do is fly this little tiny single engine airplane, just us and maybe a couple other people right now. And you, this difference between roaring mega Christianity and mm. small Christianity. And he told me, he said, you know, Paul had to learn how to do that. And a lot of what we read from him in prison is Paul by himself, not Paul in the church. And he said, it brings out a beautiful side of your walk with God, a depth that you'd never get to in that big, you know, and when you're in a little tiny plane by yourself, you're the one pressing all the buttons. You're the one, you know, mm. let's go. That's, you're the one reading the gauges, checking everything. Uh, so there's 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 pros and cons either way. But man, I really miss getting to be at Gateway and getting to be around all my friends. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dude, community it really matters. Like it really, really matters. And you don't you don't think about it so much. You think about the the times you do spend with the Lord and the times that you're just like in prayer. Or, you know, you're doing your thing, but. Um, I definitely felt the difference uh, not being surrounded by the church. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Like we, like we really are. Like uh, the the there's a guy in, in Tennessee. Uh, his name's Jeremy Austeel, and he, he he he. I heard him preach a sermon one time about like the first words of the Lord's Prayer is like Our Father. Our. Like, yeah, we really are. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we all really should sell everything and and move to a hippie commune really <laughs> <laughs> no! uh, i just oh. i just watched waco on netflix <laughs> <laughs> yo i was gonna watch that with lacy and then uh, that super spiritual part of me kicked in i was like i just i gotta i gotta check in my spirit about this <laughs> she's like <laughs> no i'm with you there was it weird but, was waco uh, a little weird Oh, Waco's weird, and um, there's definitely some uh, interesting twists in it. But it's just it's just crazy how that can go south. But anyways, back to the real, <laughs> back to reality. Um, yeah. I hear you, man, on that. That it's a uh, our our father. It was never my father. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus was teaching us how to pray. That's a powerful point. You know, um, and, and, and really, like, during this time, it, it's having been slowed down like we are, uh, it's, you, you know, you mentioned Paul, like, it's kind of funny, man, how God marks you and then, and then hooks you up with, like, your people, you know? Like, yeah. there's just, like, when, you know, when I think about you and I, and I was talking to Tom, Kel, Josh Edwards— Mm -hmm. um just i've been just kind of reconnecting with some of my friends and it's like there's like uh there's like it not it's not just like shared language it's not saying the right stuff but it's just there's just a connection that you that god gives you with certain people that are so yeah. vital to your walk with the lord you know what i mean and you're dude you're definitely definitely one of those people man i got so many memories dude i wanted to i wanted to revisit oh, yeah. um I, I so i met you uh just kind of randomly you were you were See, I was so I was in you Nashville. You came as a guest speaker. The oh, first time I saw you. 
Oh, for real? At the Young yeah. Adults Ministry. So yeah. yeah, okay, that was right. At the YMCA. I was like, dude, I've got this heavy revelatory word, you know, because I was down in revival, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, dude. And I remember Burke was like pumping me up. He's like, this guy, literally, when he sneezes, <laughs> it's the breath of God flowing out. I mean, he was like pumping me up so big, and I was like, dude, I got this word, man. And it was like literally, a, it was. I felt like a Baptist preacher. It was like literally a scripture. It was like, it was like the, it was the verse out of Ephesians, like, you are the handiwork of God. And I was like, Ooh. and that was it. Like, that was the whole thing. I was like, I got this word. And, and, I, and I read it, and everyone was just like, uh, everybody was just like, Ooh. <laughs> and it was like, like a, yeah, it was like, hmm, <laughs> he's not praying enough, you know? But it was like, it was like, it was like this revelation, you know? And I guess I was in such a heavy <sighs> spiritual place that just knowing that, like, man, every step of my life, every thing that I see, every season, like, God's. <laughs> Building me, like, you know. Can we pause right there? Yeah. I just want to say one of the things I appreciate about you so much, and for anyone watching, is that you are unashamedly okay with what God has really given you and where he really has you, whether it's hype or not. And I, and I love that. And our generation, you know, these younger movements and things – um, I feel like that's kind of missing, and I really appreciate that about you and saw that that night, and it caught me off guard. I was like, wait, uh, this guy just said something simple, and he's cool with it. Like, what? That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, side note. Oh, yeah, I just remember. I was like, yikes. You know, everyone's like, yeah. is there more? You know, yeah, yeah. where's the gold dust, bro? <laughs> and I and was dude, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, let's go to Steak and Shake. <laughs> <laughs> Steak and Shake, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, and then and then somehow like we connect and and fast forward like some of the best times of my like when I think about Nashville that season I was living in in in, in Nashville and dude I remember uh, so anyway I remember literally we don't call it being homeless when you're in your early twenties you call it like couch surfing you know. But, uh, but yeah, dude, I was like, yeah, I was totally homeless, dude. I mean, (laughs) if I was doing that right now, it'd be homeless. But at the time I was like, you're like, dude, come stay with me. And dude, I remember that your, your apartment off of, uh, you were like in Nippers Corner, man. I remember literally just walking into that apartment and just getting hit with the presence of God. And dude, that like, I don't know how long that I was there and you were just letting me crash on your couch. That was some of the best times. Oh, it was amazing. Those are the best times, dude. Oh yeah. man, yeah. Cause it, I was like in between stuff. I was in, I had left Church of His Presence. I was back in Nashville. I was expecting like God to just open up the floodgates of His favor and promotion. And I was just money was gonna start raining down from heaven, dude. <laughs> a wife was gonna. I, I imagine God was gonna just drop a wife out of an airplane and boom and hit. You know, I was just like. Any yeah. second now, dude, and I was like getting no phone calls. I was like no money. I was, I felt all, I was like depressed. Yeah. I was like, I remember just sitting there uh, on your little patio being like, well, it was good, you know, God, you used me. It was three years of service to the Lord and now my life is over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I met, dude, it was, the, it was like the craziest time, man. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that. The first thing that I remember about when you stayed over at my apartment for a couple weeks on the couch was the (laughs) Keurig. So everyone watching, you know what a Keurig is, uh, hopefully. (laughs) And I had my Keurig, my model, that was the $150 Keurig that was the thing to have set up on the counter. And so Simon comes and it's his, his first night. He's sleeping out there, and then I wake up and walk into the kitchen, and he's still sleeping on the couch. And I look, and I do a double take at my counter, (laughs) and the same exact model, Keurig, is sitting next to mine. And it's his. And he brought brought in your own extension cord and plugged it in. And I was like, what's going on? (laughs) You brought in your own Keurig. Oh, that's funny. And then – Oh, my gosh. and I remember that time on the porch, we, we were sitting, I had rocking chairs uh, on my porch and the beautiful view over the, over uh, 65 and old Hickory. 
and and just leaning back and we were what 26 no 24 oh 25. dude 23 we were, 24 yeah 23. and we just felt we were like 15 we were dude <laughs> we, we were bro i i thought i was like man i'm ready to go into retirement <laughs> i thought we were done i thought we were done i was like like it's over you know uh, not that anything bad happened. It's just we had spent in such a high speed, early twenties. So much happening, so fast. Mm-hmm. Thousands of people, just lots of just crazy things, and then all of a sudden, just like just dead silent and radio silence. Uh, not much going on, and it's kind of in a bigger sense what's happening right now with with COVID. If you think about it. You know, we've we've gone from just like, yeah, dude, to just that was in my life. That was the first time I ever like had a pause from the Lord. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I, I was literally like, I lived in South Mississippi. I had this God yeah. encounter. Moved to Nashville. Nine months later, I run in. You know, I'm like playing drums with 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 Lindell. I'm in Alabama. It, everything was going bam, 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 so fast, dude, <laughs> so fast. And that was the first time in my walk with God that there was actually like a pause. Like, yep. and I thought something was wrong. I mean, I was just like, yep. Um, yep. I, yep. I guess it's, I guess it's done. You know, like, I had no idea that, you know, like that God was doing, like God was like, do, you know, doing something in my life and like slowing yeah. me down. But yeah, I remember that was the, that was the first time I actually like, actually like, you know, like had like that, that stop, that pause from the Lord. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But, but man, it was like those times were so special, dude. It was like it was so amazing. I remember like hanging out, throwing the baseball, like I Yeah. I guess like I guess like getting a job. I don't even know if I like <laughs> But dude, oh yes, I remember um I remember like God was really teaching me that in the season. I don't know if you remember, Phil, but like you I mean, you were you were getting calls. Like, I don't know if people know this. Like, I remember I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name. I won't say the name, but certain like big ministries were like calling you up. You're hanging out with like, you know, like all these na- like these name brand Christians, you know what I'm saying? And and dude, I'm like I you know, I had saved up like a couple thousand dollars and like that was it. And I was just watching my little savings account get dried. I was expecting TBN to call me up and I was going to go pr- you know, I, I didn't I didn't know what to expect, dude. Like I just I just was on this huge spiritual high of fast going 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 and then it was just nothing and I was yeah. watching God in your life and 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 bro, it was like one of the first gut check times where I was like, wow, you know, this is one of my best friends who I love dearly, and I'm watching the favor of God hit his life like I'm used to it hitting my life, mm-hmm. and am I going to celebrate him, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, I mean, I'm going to be very real, and and, and, and I, dude, I just, you know, I, I can talk like this because, dude, you're you're like... You're, you're like a brother, but I remember just seeing God open doors and move in your life and then just kind of looking at my life and being like, um, God, did you forget about me? Like, have I, I mean, is there like some crazy sin that I don't know about? And, mm-hmm. and bro, just, I just, I remember just start, just I made the decision like to cheer you on and, and, mm-hmm. that, and God really taught me something in that season. You know what I mean? Wow. And it, yeah. and it stuck with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and I can... I think, you know, that just is, that's probably just what everyone's thinking about everyone. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I think those thoughts and, um, I think, um, you know, it's like a, it's a body, you know, when one person wins, we're all winning. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we're just living stones, all a part of a bigger house, so to speak. Um, but man, I just, I so appreciate the way that you just have always been such a good friend and um it marked my life in that season i remember when some of those people were calling uh uh, (laughs) we would just be like and i don't know at at sonic throwing a frisbee or whatever hanging out with people and just the way that you you were so supportive man um you you've really been I, i i don't care who's watching but you've been one of the best friends i've ever had Dude, come on. Yeah, I feel the same no way. Doubt. If you yeah, no like you just get to a place where you're like, I love this dude so much that like 
Mm. I'm just, I, I can't help but celebrate what God's doing in his life because I yeah. want good things for somebody, you know? And yeah, bro, I, I honestly, honestly think like if we can't, if we can't get there, you know, in a, we can't get there personally. Like, I wonder like if it's, if it's something that God, it, it, it like blocks God from doing it in us, you know? Yeah. Because if, I, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's the Lord moving, you know? And if it's moving in my best friend, like, come on, like, let's get, let's, cause it, it's like, I trust you, Lord, with my life. Well, it, because you only have two choices in those moments, jealousy or celebration. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we all know the road that jealousy goes down or envy. Uh, you know, in, in James, it says, for where you find envy and strife, there you'll find every other kind of evil thing. Like it just leads to more bad. Mm -hmm. And um, celebration, uh, you know, what you celebrate, I feel like just starts happening more and more. Um, you know, I, I hate to compare it to training a dog, but it's like, dogs learn and receive like like yeah. you know when you celebrate good stuff it just um it promotes it happening more and i feel like it opens the door for it to happen more um so i think that's that's a that's a valid thing for sure bro for, yeah man and valid and, thought dude i and i remember like some of the wildest experiences let's talk about the uh dude what are we talking about what are we talking about <laughs> Oh, oh my God. <laughs> dude, we have been in some weird church services. Yeah, bro. I don't. I feel oh like if gosh. you have not been in the deep end of like <laughs> what just happened in that room, you're just not ready for revival yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> dude, I mean, it was like we. Oh, dude, we would. And what's so cool about Nashville? This is something I miss about Nashville. It, I mean, especially in that time, it was like there was always like something going on, right? There was always like a prayer meeting, a worship night, hanging out with Carlos praying, going to a conference, doing this, doing that. And we uh, we had heard about this like this prophetic conference, right? And when we mean yeah. prophetic, I mean like deep in, like it's going to get weird. And we knew it. We're like, you know what? I don't care. Like weird we doesn't... knew that going in there. We, we were like, I remember talking. I remember we almost didn't go. We were like, I, I was like, Simon, I know there's going to be weird stuff going on at this church meeting, <laughs> but do you know what? We're just, just hungry for God. Do you remember? I'm just hungry for God. Yes. I really genuinely love Jesus, and I'm willing to risk it for a biscuit. <laughs> or maybe some biscuits with gravy. Yeah. <laughs> maybe too much gravy. I just remember. Gravy. I was like, you know what? Our, you know, our spiritual covering would probably deem this meeting inappropriate, <laughs> but I'm like, if God's there and there's a, there's a chance that I'm going to get touched and I'm going to get ministered to, and like, I'm going to be more on fire for Jesus. I'll, I'm down, dude. So I remember we had the talk. We're like, no matter what happens, dude, we're going in for Jesus. And then I remember like they, they did, uh, they did the, uh, the prayer time. Right. And it's, and it's like, all right, here we go. Everyone's like, all right, skip the message. We're here for the impartation, you know? And yeah, so, yeah. dude, I, and I remember I looked, I was like looking for the most normal guy on the prayer, prayer <laughs> line. And he, he had like, he had like his shirt tucked in. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, I was like totally safe, dude. This guy's theology has to be good. His shirt's his sh tucked in. His shirt's tucked in. Yeah. <laughs> so I walked up to him and he prayed this real sweet, like, God, thank you for my brother. Just bless him if you want to. Amen. <laughs> And then I was like, I was like looking around and people are like laid out on the floor and like getting like exploded, you know, into the, <laughs> and I was like, I'm going for it. I, I'm so I'm like, all right, let me pick someone. Let me pick the most craziest guy in the world. Let's go to the next level. Yeah. It's kind of like when you get to a, uh, a roller coaster park, a theme park, you're like, I'm going to start off with the warm up ride. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm going to start off with the, like the turning, rotating <laughs> yeah. seat ride. Like. Okay, all right, and then and then we went from there to like I'm going for the Titan. Yeah, yeah. I want to go straight down. I want to I want to feel my organs trying to leave my body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. So like, and then and that's that's when I knew we had like a friendship for life, bro. When the when when the the guy it the the prayer it, he like grabbed Phil and I both. He's like, come here, come here, guys, come here, sons of God. I was like, 
it's true. We are sons of God, you know? So, and then, and then, and then he started praying for us and immediately he like laid hands, he laid hands yeah, on us. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think, and I think, oh, this is going to be great. And then he just yells at the top of his lungs. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and and I, I went, this is what I did. I went, <laughs> we both looked at each other and we're like, I was like, all right, I'm in. All right, I'm in. whatever. I'm going for it. You know? And, and dude, that's the thing. When you get so like when you get so worried about keeping the weird stuff out, you miss you miss stuff. Yeah, you, you do, do miss things for sure. For sure. I'm trying to find that wine app, but I can't find it. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for, but oh well. Yeah. Skip it. I mean, dude, I, I think about in our church, like when, when when Lacey and I first moved to New York, we it's like, okay, we know we have a Pentecostal church. We know that this is like God's moving here. But like I looked for I looked for the thing that like kind of pushes the envelope in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The the, sure. the one section that's dancing or they're doing something and it just it crosses the line of like this is normal into mm-hmm. like if you yeah. were looking at it totally in the natural you'd be like that's a little different. Like that's different. Yeah. And when I saw that here, I thought we're like, amen. Like God, like we, you know, it, if there's not just one little like crack where God can just move and it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. I think you strain out the Holy Spirit doing something. Yeah. What do you think about that? You, dude, you're one of the most prophetic guys in, as far as in when worship and like, and that kind of thing. Um, and we've been in some really weird atmospheres. And then we've been in some pretty straight edge atmospheres, but like, where does, how does that all, I mean, how do you, how do you approach that, man, as you're leading worship? Well, I think the approach is to ask yourself the question, why am I here? Um, am I here for him or am I here for something to happen? Um, because the thing is, is, you know, when you read and Revelation 4 and 5 or Daniel or Ezekiel or anywhere where someone's seeing into heaven, you clearly see two things. There's order, but it's different. Like you're seeing both of those things at once. When you read a when you read the book of Revelation or Daniel or Ezekiel, if you don't read it and think to yourself, this is different or this is weird, mm-hmm. you're probably not normal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like any normal person would look at heaven and, And you even read when people in the Bible have, you know, one of those really special encounters with God. They have this moment where they just like fall over dead or they're just like turned into stone. They're just heaven's just different. That's that's what the point I'm trying to make. But at the same time, there's order. But then here's the big the big thing is it all revolves around him. It's all about Jesus, all the angels, all of the worship. Everything, like the crescendo, is that there's someone, a man on the throne, just like you and me, somebody who's walked in flesh and gave his life for us. And I think, you know, um, I really side with uh, Lindell's thoughts on prophetic worship, uh, that there is no such thing. Um, People watching who who uh, know me well might be like, what did you just say? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is, is prophecy is prophecy and worship is worship. And you can sing and prophesy, and that's great. And, you know, the gifts are real, and I believe in the gifts. And at Gateway Church, we believe in the gifts. Um, but prophetic worship, I think, is people trying to say, you sang a spontaneous song and it was anointed, or it was glorious, or whatever. Right. Um, but I think, you know, the biggest thing for me is I I never go in to, I heard Joel Stockstill say this once when he's preparing for prophetic ministry. He said, I think it is more important to prepare myself as a vessel than it is for me to prepare all of these notes and things I think I need to say and verses. He says, I think it's more important that I'm prepared as a vessel. Wow. And I think the, the greatest way to prepare yourself as a vessel is what are you looking at? What are you gazing on? What are you taking in? And the best way for me to prepare, you know, that song, that old song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. 
it's like the first line of that song is Lord, Lord prepare me. It's it's the preparation that comes from being with the Lord. And um, you know, when I go into a time of worship and I've just I've I've been with Jesus, I've been having time with him, I've been hungry on my way there or that morning or that week. I've prepared my heart. I've been filling myself with the word. Then, man, when it when it comes time to be up on the platform and mm. um, minister, uh, it doesn't matter if it's five minutes long or five hours long. God's going to be on it because I've prepared myself uh, as a vessel. And I think that that's the approach, <clears throat> and that's the key to you know prophetic ministry or prophetic environments um i think when it becomes about other things when it becomes about i gotta have this big moment or hoopla or whatever whatever it is you know i gotta have this big then you're, you're focusing on something else and it's not jesus and i think that the the center point you know like and let me say this you can go to the other end of the pendulum like over here is weirdness. Over here is dead, dry tradition and man-made things that might, you know, be polished and clean and comfortable, but they're they're dead. You know, Jesus said to the Pharisees, "In vain you search the Scriptures looking for me." So Jesus is saying, what's he saying with that statement? All of these verses, Torah, Talmud, on up to the book of Revelation, they're all pointing to me, to Jesus. Mm. Come on. And I think that that's the centerpiece, you know. It says that he is the chief cornerstone of all the living stones. He's the foundation. He's the rock on which everything's built. And um, at, at Gateway, what I love is we close every service out with saying, uh, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? And we know the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. And I love that we do that. And so no matter what, even if the service, even if worship went off or if it was just a predictable whatever, no matter what, we're not compromising an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak and to move um, and to meet people at the altars. And I think that that's a, that's a wonderful thing that we do that I, that I really love. And, um, and I think that's my answer, man. How do I prepare myself? It's just... Eyes on him, all on him. So good, dude. It's so good. It's, you know, it, it, I, I, I just had an awesome talk with, with, uh, with Lindell, Pastor Lindell. I think it was yesterday, the day before, and it's like, dude, <coughs> it really is about just being with the Lord. You know, yeah. like it just it we 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 make it so difficult sometimes. You know, but you know, like. Man, I just I, I just so appreciate I so appreciate where we've been and I so I so appreciate like how the Lord I feel is like stirring up all these different people, you know? Like I'm reaching back out to some of my old you know, some of the guys mm-hmm. that, that I wish I, you know, spoke more to and it's just it's amazing, man. It's just it's so it's mm-hmm. so awesome, so special. And um but yeah, dude. So um so if you if you had to say like you had one uh kind of one closing Kind of thing. I, we're I, we're actually doing pretty good. I, I try to keep these like thirty minutes, like so we don't like you know blow people oh, out of man. the water. I know, I know, but we're like we're like we're you're doing pretty well with the time. But um, man, what do you what do you feel like feel like God's saying right now, Phil? What do you feel like the <laughs> <laughs> come, on, come on, Prophet Phil, hit us, dude. No, that's so open ended. <laughs> oh man, you, and you don't I... have to. You don't feel any pressure to respond to it if you don't. I think, um, well, the one thing that just popped into my heart, into my spirit as we were talking was that he's the good shepherd and it's his job to be the shepherd, not mine. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, you know, and he, there's a whole process there of shepherding that David talks about. And one verse that I love is you make me lie down and it's a pretty forceful statement Mm. there. You know, you make me lie down in green pastures and you lead me beside still waters. And, um, 
there's this whole thing, and David David really caught that. Um, oh, there goes my hand. Yeah. <laughs> David David really um, he grabbed a hold of that, and he understood that that hey, it's not my job to walk this thing out, and it sh- and it plays out. It shows itself when people tried to take the throne from him time and time again. He he just let him, you know. He he just realized to that degree um, of of us uh, release to that degree he trusted God as a shepherd and I feel like um, right now there's a lot of <clears throat> unknowns for everybody there's a lot um, that we are not sure about there's a lot that we can be antsy about and anxious about um, but the wonderful thing is is uh, out of all the things that we're unsure of, we can be sure that it's not our job to finish this thing. It's not our job to write the story. It's not our job to make it all happen. And we can really trust in the Holy Spirit's leading and the shepherd's uh, guidance. And, and you know, in shepherding, you have uh, good shepherds and bad shepherds and okay shepherds and you know, there there are shepherds that I've read about them that do a terrible job with their sheep and their wool outweighs their own body weight because it's so dirty and matty and thick and their hooves are all messed up and they're easy prey for wolves. But Jesus Jesus calls himself a good shepherd. So all of the those things that you could think that could happen negatively to a flock, to sheep are all the things that will not happen to his children, to the sheep of his pasture. You know, he's not going to leave us or forsake us. He's not going to let us, our wool, get all unsheared and untouched. And he's not going to let the wolves overrun us. And um, that's that's what popped into my heart, especially right now as we're transitioning, um, hopefully, out of COVID, it back into normal life, and what are things going to look like? What am I going to do? What's going to happen for us? For 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 myself and my my fiance Kaylin, um, there are so many things right now. Like, can can you imagine? Fiance, oh! dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold that thought. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you know, can you can you imagine? I know that this is tough for people who are working, established, but man, we're we're like coming together, merging, you know, starting a a marriage, starting off a life, starting a family in the future, starting all those things, um, planning a wedding in the midst of this. And that has just had to be my focus is, you know what? It's okay to trust God to write the story. It's okay to trust God to make things beautiful in their time. Um, and to just let, let go of things. And so it's, it's a learning curve, but, um, it's a good one. Dude. So come on, man. I don't know. Like I, I, I'm still like, I, you know, we went through the whole wedding thing, you know, it's very important when things are released and the times, and I don't want to like overshare, like push you to overshare, but dude, you're getting married, bro. I mean, come on, right. (laughs) You're getting married, man. To, to the girl of my Nth degree dreams could not have dreamt up a more oh, incredible person. Yeah, <laughs> man, I'm so excited. So you, so the it the went like what about you know again? I don't want to like release information or whatever, but like when are you guys looking at you September? Know, September. All right, very cool. Yeah. So you're, I mean, we're praying that like this clears up so you guys can get busy like planning a you know planning a, the the wedding of your dreams man you know what yeah I mean? so we got a we got a lot done real quickly before everything hit and right now it looks you know we we've already decided we're we're going to have our wedding and we're going to get we're going to get married in September whether it's 10 people or 100 people or 250 people we're going to we're going to go forward with it Come on. Uh, but it's 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 crazy cuz you know, we're calling our vendors and things like that, and no one's answering. <laughs> Some people are. Men's Warehouse called me back. That was good. Yeah. That's so insane, yeah. man. We're That's so insane. excited and so happy and so glad you and Lacey, hopefully, if, 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 if we're allowed to, that you guys get to be there 
Dude, I'll wear my cloth mask that doesn't protect me from anything all the way <laughs> on a plane. <laughs> or dry, you know, dry, we'll we'll fi- we'll figure it out, man. I I'm just so excited, man. You're it's yeah. it's a, it's just awesome. I'm so awesome. Back to dude, when I think about my wedding and I think about how incredible it was and how special it was, I will never forget how legitimately just happy and excited you were for me oh, as a friend, yeah. dude. That that's one of the like biggest memories that I have of my wedding is like Dude, there, there's just nothing like you and Ben and the, those, I mean, just being so excited, like legitimately happy. You know, some people are there just yeah. to, to dance and eat and, you know, and or whatever. I don't know why people would go to a wedding, but like you were, dude, just, it was so much just amazingness and love and bro, I can't oh, wait yeah. to, I can't wait to be there for you, man. Oh, thanks, man. It's yeah. Like, it's amazing. Just so amazing. Thank- so, oh, I love you, man. I can't wait to see you, dude. Thank you for jumping on and hanging out. I know that yeah. this is such like a, a tough time for so many people, um, mm-hmm. but I've been so encouraged just by t- just kind of touching base with with you and and just getting yeah. on here and just laughing you and, too, man. and hanging out. But um, yeah, let's let's like let's do this again sometime in the future. Let's do it. And uh, and I can't wait to see you in person, dude. So, bro, Same. love you so much, Phil. And love you too, uh, bro. thanks for jumping on here tonight. Okay. All right, dude. I'll see you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, man. Well, so guys, thank you all for hanging out with us. And, you know, if I've had any, any kind of uh, reoccurring uh, thought since I've, been, since I've started doing these little live streams is that, um, man, God is, is so real and he's so much more than just good vibes in our minds. Like, he is a living God that desires to experience us, to experience you, and, and he's so willing just to draw near. The Bible says we draw near to him, and he draws near to us, and he's, he is like, he is everything we need. And so um, I just want to encourage you to just remember the faithfulness of the Lord. Remember the, the, the experiences, the things that, um, that, that made you who you are in the beginning, um, and just man and just delight yourself in the lord you know so uh just happy to to be hanging out uh my amazing wife made me some tacos so i'm at the about to hit that up but thanks for hanging out and um and uh, we will see you guys next time bye